Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever it is that you're watching, it's your boy, Jared Wilkins. Listen, I uh, want to come on and really um, talk about this concept, talk about this principle, talk about this philosophy. I started it yesterday and uh, the signal just wasn't good. Hey, JP Watkins. And uh, so I just wanted to come and just leaving, uh, leaving the gym, uh, success is hidden in your daily routine so you got to go fight for it but i want to talk about this real quickly for those of you that are like me you're in the fight you're in the fight some of you you're fighting to build your bank account some of you you're fighting to build uh, your body others of you you're fighting to build a relationship whether it's a marriage whether it's a friendship you're in the fight you know i tell people all the time that you know what it takes faith to start but it requires a fight to finish what's up milton my brother how you doing Good morning, good morning. If you're just logging in, do me a favor. Let me know where it is that you're chiming in from. Uh, if you're watching the replay, put number two replay. I want to dive into this because I don't want to waste a whole lot of time. It takes, it takes faith to start. Scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. That's what faith is. Faith means I'm doing it even though I don't see it in the physical form. Faith means I'm willing to take this first step even though I do not see the entire staircase. That's what faith is, that's Dr. King. But I wanna say something to, you, something to you. Hey, Trey Ford, Enrique, can't wait to see you guys. I wanna say something to you. It requires faith to start. Many people start, but very few people have the fight to finish. It's a fight. Steve Duncanson said, life is a fight for territory and the moment you stop fighting for what you want, what it is that you don't want automatically takes over. Life is a fight for territory. The moment you stop fighting for what it is that you want, then what it is that you don't want automatically takes over. So I wanna encourage you, I wanna show up to encourage those of you that are still in the fight. How do you know you're still in the fight? You've taken a hit or two along the way. You, you've taken a hit. See, the only way that I know you're in the fight is actually when you've been hit. It doesn't matter how great of a defensive fighter you are. Floyd Mayweather, one of the greatest defensive boxers of his not only generation, but of all time, he would still tell you that there were some fights he prepared for, he trained for. By the way, preparation is the proof of faith. Did you hear me? Hey Frank, good morning. Gift, good morning. Preparation is the proof of faith. I know when a person has faith based upon what they're preparing for. A woman gets prepared for the baby before the baby ever shows up. And in order for the baby to show up, the woman still is required to push. P-U-S-H, prospect until success happens. She's required to push. Yeah, pray until success happens. She's required to push. Hey, Nancy, positive until success happens. For those of us that are still in the fight, you're fighting for your business. You're fighting for your bank account. You're fighting for your relationships. You're fighting to restore. By the way, loss is the seed of restoration. I remember when I was first fighting. Started my first business, and uh, this was my first time being full-time in business. You know, it's different when you're part-time, when you got a steady income coming in from your job or your part-time job and you're you're starting a business part-time, but, and, and you're in the fight. There's, you, you've got the faith, you started, you had faith, but I'm now, I wanna shift you and elevate your mind to the fighting aspect of it. Fighting, hey Albert, good to see you, man. Congratulations on all this taking place in Ghana. I can't wait to get back to Africa. But listen to me, there's a different level that you matriculate through in this process from faith to fight. See, it takes faith to get in the ring. It takes fight to stay in it. But I remember when I first started, I first started uh, and I was full-time, full-time, only depending on the income from my business, from my network marketing business. And uh, hey, Mr. Penny Pen Pen, my millionaire friend, and I remember, listen to me, I remember launching that business. It took faith to launch it and we were rocking. First time in my career, this is in 2009, I launched that business, I was broke, I didn't have $150 to pay my light bill. I put together a list, I prospected, I called people. Prior to that, I had never made $100,000 in six years combined of being in business for myself, but I was part-time. Here I am full-time, I had just gone through, uh, I had just gone through layoffs, I had gone through being fired or wrongfully terminated. That's a whole different can of worms to get into, but I wanna talk about the transition from faith to fight. Because some of you, 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 I'm congratulating you right now because you're in the fight. But, but I want you to stay in the fight. Here's what happened. I'm building. 
first week I make three thousand dollars. It took me. Uh, I took the money that I had actually borrowed from my father at the time. This is 2009. I'm supposed to pay my mortgage. Didn't pay my mortgage. Was behind on the mortgage about a month. Uh, going into the second month, and you know, foreclosure notice starts showing up. But I took the money. I told him I was going to pay the mortgage because I needed to keep a roof over my head and and my daughter's head, Chandler, who's now 10. But I took the money and opposed to paying the mortgage, I sold the seed and I wrapped the seed up in faith. I sold that seed. I started that business, $1,300 to start in that network marketing business back in 2009. I'll never forget it. August 2009, I got my business plan written out on a napkin from my coach, from my mentor. Here I am, no money in the bank. Here I am, no big, big influence. Here I am, had failed my way all the way through that process, but I'm now full-time. I've got to make this thing happen. It's something about a champion that, 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 that has his back against the wall. Les Brown says, if you find yourself falling down, land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Here I was. First month, out the gates. First week, $3,000. By my third month, I was making over $8,000 for the month. By my fifth month, January 2010, I had my first $20,000 month in income. We did over $120,000 in sales that month, 2010. Never made that type of money in my life, in business, working corporate America. I'd never done it before, Thomas. Never done it before, Kenneth. Denise, I had never done it before. But if you're willing to do what you have not done, then you can live the way you have not lived. Can I say it differently? It takes faith to start, but a fight to finish. So here I was. I'm on cloud nine. I'd gone from not being able to pay a $150 light bill, but I had the faith to start. And I went from not paying, being able to pay the $150 light bill to now, that was August, September, October, November, December, January, in my fifth month, earned over $20,000 for the month, Nancy. Aaron, 20 grand for the month. This was 2010. I ain't talking about 2020. I'm talking about 2010. This was a decade ago. Here I was on cloud nine. Things rocking and rolling. And then things, watch it, in business, I can guarantee you, things will always shift. Denise, good afternoon from the UK. Things will always shift and my business shifted. Not that I did anything wrong, but I watched my business begin to disintegrate. It went from, Frank, my business went from $20,000 a month and my volume went from $120,000 a month in sales and it started to decline. I was still working. I was still traveling. I was still presenting, Jeff. I, I was still doing the business, but guess what? People were quitting. People were leaving. Some, you know, they went over to other companies. Some of them went to focus with their kids and, and the business started to fall apart and I I went from 120,000 Josh Feltz. I went from 120,000 a month in sales down to about $30,000 a month in sales. And here's what happened. My income went to 20,000 from $20,000 for the month. And I was down to about 4,000, 3,000, 4,000 for the month, Milton. It takes faith to start, but it takes a fight to finish. For those of you that, that, that you have, oh, here it is. You've been hit in business. Maybe maybe you started off, you started off slow and you got strong and then you took a hit in business and it went down. For those of you, your marriage started off in the honeymoon phase, you've taken a hit in your marriage and things have started to go down. He's sleeping on the couch. You're like, baby, you ain't cooked in six months. And oh yeah, you, you, you're taking a hit with your children. Your children now getting arrested for things. You're like, oh my God, why are you talking like this? Why are you doing this? Your body, you've taken a hit. You started off on the first, you were in the gym. You had the spandex on, come on, Franco. You, you had all the, 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 yeah, the memorabilia on and you were working out day and night. You've been doing this for three, six months and then you hurt your shoulder. You took a hit and you ain't been into the gym in six months and, and all the 30 pounds that you lost, you've gained 30 plus 10 more of its friends. You got 40 now new pounds on you. You've, you've taken a hit and that's what happened. I took a hit. And uh, here's the thing, what happens in business and life. After you take a hit, we discover <laughs> how strong of a chin you've got. Some people take a hit and they get knocked out. Some people take it, oh, if you're still in the fight, would you write in the comments, I'm still fighting. Yeah, write in the comments, I'm still fighting. If you're still in the fight, you've taken some hits. Hey, Ron Head, I remember, thank you so much for your contribution in the YTB days, I remember, Ron Head. If you're still in the fight, if you're still in the fight, Isaac Cortez, if you're still in the fight, I need you to write it in the comments. I am still fighting because you're going to take some hits, Denise. You're going to take some hits. You're going to be hit. And watch this. Sometimes you're going to be blindsided by a hit. And uh, I took that hit. My income went completely backwards, went from $20,000 a month down to three to $4,000 a month. But my expenses stayed the same in business. My lifestyle stayed the same. And if you don't understand what that means, that means if your expenses are high, Oh yes, and your income is low. 
that in between is called broke. <laughs> that in between, when, when, when we talk about you had more month than money, didn't mean you were a bad person. It just means you may have taken a hit. And I took a hit and I'll never forget. I said, okay, I, I, I've taken a hit. I hit the canvas, but I'm not going to stay on the canvas because the canvas is nowhere for a champion to remain. So I, 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 my vision and my why pulled me back off the canvas. And here's what happened. This is 2010. I never forget. I've been making prospecting phone calls because how do you get up? You start calling your way out. How do you get up? You start pushing, prospecting until success happens. How do you get back up from when things have disintegrated? You stay positive until success happens. You don't point the finger. You don't blame. You don't even attempt to explain. You remain positive until success happens. You pray until success happens. You prospect until success happens. That's called push. And I kept pushing and I never forget. I had a call from a gentleman. I had been a part of his team prior about 2005 2006 2006 he had built a team of over a half a million distributors at the time he was earning over three to four hundred thousand dollars a month he had set himself up he had a net worth of a hundred million dollars I reached out to him we finally talked and he said he was ready to get started I put him on the phone with my senior business partner my senior business partner at the time was making about three to five hundred thousand dollars a month in income in business so I put the two giants together on the phone and I kept quiet my job was to connect them write this down you're one person away from poverty or prosperity write it down one person away from poverty or prosperity you become that person and then you begin to attract that person when you become attractive you can start attracting write it down when you become attractive I can start attracting I'm always one person away from a major explosion happening into my business I become the person that attracts that person now watch this I put him on the phone he says he's ready to get started he's gonna build all the way in Thailand he's gonna build all throughout these countries he had had more success than I had he had had more success than my senior business partner we looked up to him and he said I'm ready and uh, information leaked out got back to his former company and um, the gentleman that said I'm ready the gentleman that was supposed to be the explosion in my business guess what <laughs> he, he was no longer ready shucks he says Jared I'm gonna have to pause on this at some time I wanted to work with you guys I wanted to do some incredible things but they're threatening my my multiple six-figure a month income they're gonna terminate that contract if I do anything with you guys in business so I can't do it but I wish you the best I saved the email Brandy Tanisha, I saved that email. A friend of mine told me, you know, what you want inside of you, you keep in front of you. Would you write that down? What I want inside of me, I keep in front of me. So in other words, I took who it is that I wanted inside my business and I put him in front of me. I put him, oh, here it is. I put him not only in the canvas of my imagination, but I put him on the screensaver of my phone. So anytime I made a prospecting call, I would see him. Anytime I answered the phone, I would see him. Anytime I got on a conference call, I would see him. Anytime I was prospecting, I would see him because I was calling that thing that be not as though it were. Oh God. Uh. And sometimes when you're in the fight, you've got to you gotta call on a, on a help greater than yourself. When you're in the fight, what gets you off the canvas when you've taken a hit is calling on a greater power than yourself, Courtney. And when, when you've taken a hit, what keeps you in the fight is getting yourself to the place where you not give up, but you surrender. I don't have my hands up because I'm I, I have given up. I've got my hands up, Daniel. Here it is. Uh, because I surrender to his will and to his way. And watch this. I kept him on my screensaver. Not for one month. Uh, he, I kept him not for two months or three months or four months or five months or six months. I kept going. I kept staying positive. I kept prospecting. I, I kept praying. I kept practicing the principles so I could participate in the promise. And a whole year later, shucks, when people counted me out, uh, there's nothing like experiencing how people really feel about you when they don't think they need you. There's nothing like being introduced to, to the real person that you thought was not in existence. There's nothing like being exposed to people that think they no longer need you in their life. And uh, I'll never forget my mentor teaching me a long time ago. He says, character is built in the valley, not at the mountain peak. And here I was in the valley. I didn't keep him on the screensaver for six months. It was a whole year later. I'll never forget, I'm laying down after coming back from a meeting. Drove out, uh, me and a couple of partners of mine, Brandy, we drove out uh, to Beaumont, Texas to go do a meeting. That's a two hour drive. I was expecting about 30 people, five people showed up, showed the presentation, nobody joined, and we drove back 2 a.m. in the morning, and we would make it that drive every every week. I was out there showing the plan. I, I never forget having enough money to go. Oh, had enough money to 
to pay for a flight to get to Savannah, Georgia. Had a new team out there that was ready to go, and I still got this guy on my screensaver. I'm still saying, I'm you're going to be inside my business, and I went out to Georgia to go to a meeting. I only had the money to get there. I didn't have a room. I, I didn't know where I was going to stay, and uh, it took faith to get started, but it took a fight to finish. I got to Georgia, and they picked me up from the airport and took me to the room. I had reserved a room because it was no, it cost nothing to reserve the room. The room was only like $59 or $69 a night. I was going to be there for three nights to do meeting after meeting after meeting because I was going to prospect until success happened. I was staying positive until success happens. I was, I was praying until success happens because it takes a fight to finish and I'm there in Georgia. And I, I'm handing over my, my debit card. I didn't have any credit cards. I'm handing over my debit card. My account didn't even have $100 in it. I had made money, but because I had taken a hit, all the money was gone. And, and uh, I'm at the counter. I'm about to hand them my card. And uh, the guy that picked me up from the airport, he says, Mr. Wilkins, don't worry about it. We've already paid for your room. Uh, it takes faith to start. It takes a fight to finish. And here I was at the counter. I get my room key. I go upstairs and I get ready for my first meeting. And I'm doing meeting after meeting. I get back to Houston after that three-day event. I come back from doing another event in Beaumont, two hours. I get back to the to the house and I just had enough money to take care of my bills. I mean, some of you, you've been there before where you got money coming in, but your expenses are 4,000 and your income is 3,800 for the month. And uh, you ain't got no credit cards. Your credit cards are maxed out. You can't ask nobody for no money. You got to stay strong for the team because you can't let them know that you've taken a hit and things have gone backwards. And uh, I, I fell, a, I passed out in the bed. I didn't even fall asleep. I passed out. And I know I passed out because I had my Blackberry by the side of my face. I woke up that morning because I had cried myself to sleep saying, God, I know you told me to go full time. I know you, you, you've you, been with me, but I need to see you now. And I woke up with the phone on the side of my face and I opened up the phone, Lupita and Daniel. I opened up the phone, David, and I had a message. I had an email from this guy that I had on my screensaver. And uh, this was a year later, because I had been doing all these meetings. I had been staying positive. I had been prospecting. I had been praying. I had actually gone to go meet with him in Dallas because he had came down uh, to Dallas for a conference. Didn't go to his conference because he was so disappointed with the company he was with. And we would have met with him. I didn't have the gas money to get there. I didn't even have a, a good enough car to drive from Houston to Dallas. It was four hours. My, my car was leaking and squeaking. It wouldn't have made it. So I got into the car. With, with a business partner of mine and his car was it was in bad shape but it was a little bit better than mine it was trash all over the place he had a big crack in between the screen but it was okay we were going to that meeting so we can go meet with this guy at his hotel because we had to get in front of him to show the presentation and he decides he wanted to go to lunch so we come downstairs we didn't valet the car <laughs> we came downstairs and he had to get in our raggedy car and it was so dirty it was chips and and just trash in the car. We had to put a towel in the front seat. He's a multi-millionaire. We had to put a, a towel in the front seat so he could sit on that towel. And he sat on that towel. And he looked around the car and he says, man, I remember these days, 30, 20 years ago when I first got started. He didn't demonize me. He didn't talk about me. He didn't ridicule me. And very few, very few rich people ridicule those of us that are in the fight. It's the broke people that ridicule you. It's the broke people that talk behind your back. It's the broke people that, that say you're crazy. You need to go get a real job. It's the broke people that laugh when you take a hit. The rich and the wealthy people, they celebrate, they clap, they applaud, they cheer, they encourage, they give when they see you in the fight. And I'll never forget, he sent me that email a year later. I woke up and I saw the email from him saying, I'm ready to launch. I've got 160 people we're ready to put in the system right now. I'm ready to do business with you. And that following month, I had gone 
from my business at one point doing $120,000 a month in sales down to $30,000 a month and the following full month he got started we went from where we were 30,000 to over $330,000 in sales for the month and we earned over $50,000 that month that was September 2011 and ladies and gentlemen my life changed. My life changed because I had to fight. I had the faith to start. But my life was transformed because I had the fight to finish. Let me encourage those of you that are in the fight. People have left you. People have turned their back on you. They're ridiculing you. They're talking about you in small groups and in chats and in Facebook posts and in Instagram lives. They've stopped, they've stopped answering your call. They don't believe in you anymore because you've taken some hits. Let me encourage you. Have the fight. Positive until success happens. Pray until success happens. And prospect until success happens happens it's not over until I win I didn't get started to lay down I got started so I can finish ladies and gentlemen if this message empowered you if it encouraged you if it inspired you do me a favor share it with somebody post it on your walls tag a person in it send it to anybody you can and let them know I have to fight to finish. God bless you. God bless your families. And God will certainly bless your dreams.